The quarterfinals of this ESO weekly cup are going to be Lunchbox on the red team versus 55 on the blue. Let's have a look at the splits. Okay, so it does look like we've got we've got Quivega moving towards the close. We do have Tex to be checking for that cross, of course, as well. Bullet Punch looks like he's going to advance over towards the Henge, but they are going to cap that before he's going to be able to. I think that's just to make sure that uh, 55 weren't actually going to be able to uh, cross over. And we do have two on one versus uh, in the midpoint at the moment. We do have Rom currently at the back of the point. Um, I just noticed that that was wrong, actually. That was confusing. Um, <laughs> geez. Uh, okay, so Mr. Melo at the moment currently just, just bunkering on the point on the mid and just having a look at this overall mid fight. We do have uh, two I side points. I bullet, point, uh, bullet point, bullet punch might have actually DC because he's running into a wall. Uh, Shut kind of took advantage of that and immediately brought him down into the down state. And uh, now he disconnected, so uh, the five points are immediately rewarded for the enemy team there. Uh, that's not a good start to disconnect on the red team right in the first couple of beginnings. Misha already said AFK. Okay, cool. Well, I that's, think, that's I think good he... sportsmanship, yeah. I mean, I don't know what maybe the admins might want to start it again because it's so quick into yeah. the start of the game, but we'll have to... Okay, yeah. Otherwise, we'll we, let them do it. we had right <laughs> in the beginning, we, we had uh, some nice tries. Shad really tried to position himself to maybe uh, get get a decap on the far point but didn't find the opportunity so he held back and now we have this really off point fight in genium odium uh, versus tom tommy tom I, oh i pronounced the name right uh on the midpoint keep <laughs> decapped and 3v3 just off the side of keep yeah, they're, they're fighting in between the nodes at the moment. I'm um, just having a look at, uh, sorry, Kruve, who's actually really low on HP. He's just gone down as well, just for, oh, nice res coming out from Milo Krata there, popping the bubble, of course, doing a little bit of a knockback. He's going to be able to res him up as oh, well. Shut immediately, enough, taking please. advantage of the people being busy with resing and trying to get the Good DK idea. on Minecraft. Uh, saw that. Taxby as well. Taxby the first to react, but it didn't quite make it in time. DK no, is through. Shut is leaving, doesn't want the 1v1. Uh, just wants to get back into the mid fight. Yeah, don't want to one v one probably text me as well because he's quite he's quite squishy. I haven't checked uh, Shad's build, so I did need to one hundred percent make sure of what I'm saying there. But just looking Penistrike. at Melo on the mid, he is running Penistrike. Okay, so he's going to be quite squishy. Oh, now we um, have decap attempt from Cuerva. We have the reaction from Rom. He is on his tails, but the decap might actually happen, especially if if he gets some immobilize or slow cripple or something like that off there, or it doesn't even need to. Got the immobilized, but didn't even need to, and now is really trying to win the 1v1. So, not just there for the decap, he's there for the long haul. Nice, and Eugenium Modi, Odium just went down in mid as well. Kruve is currently, he's still, that fight might go on for a little bit of time at the moment. Ingenium's down, so mid fight currently in, uh, in favor of uh, 55 HP marks at the moment. It's kind of weird seeing a 4v4. <laughs> change the yeah. 4v4 conquest um so it's even more it's difficult because like you really can't cover your close point at all now you kind of almost have to yeah it's difficult well i suppose you can really if you really wanted to but um, oh, and they actually down the mid. Ooh, and the bunker nice. the guardian bunker the focus target is always a bit difficult to get down but if you get him down that's a huge advantage for the team fight especially if uh, at a really off point situation you have taxby going down but they work quick with the rest Although this might mean and does mean the capture point for the blue team on the keep because two people had to go off point to get the rest. Shut now down, caught by Ingenium Odium, nice interrupt on the stomp, uh, pushed back onto the point actually. Or did he teleport? I didn't quite notice. A lot of damage on Shut, raising a thief, uh, of course, always a little bit difficult, but they got him back up. Yeah, he needs to get off point. He was just um, he was just at about nine or ten stacks of vulnerability as well, and he just wanted to you know waiting for that blind to run off as well. But the, while he does that, he's actually going to go and decap mine, and I think he'll just jump back to mid again unless he can get a full cap. But you do see Tex to be in the distance behind him is actually trying to come back over as well to make sure that that doesn't happen. But going back over to the mid fight as well, still very even, and no one's on the hinge for blue at the moment. Of course, Misha is still AFK. You can see him on the map, but it is a four v four. Just in case you have come back into the game. Game. We have two bosses up still. This is the first round, and uh, I think Kruve is going to go for that decap again over on Henge. Might actually get the full cap as well. Yeah, but he's running into the respawn of Mr. Mato, so he might not even uh, get the decap if his reaction time is fast enough. And oh, no, it's going to be really close, nope. but he gets the decap. No cap though, there, and a 1v1 might take ages. We had a I'd situation it, yeah. earlier where. <laughs> 
where we saw actually an unused fiery greatsword in the middle, which uh, was just basically uh, due to um, two people in Genium Odium as well as Milo wanted to just survive. And although the fiery greatsword is great, uh, great for damage, it's not really um, doing that much for your survivability. So they completely ignored that. I mean, taking taking out Quiv, uh, sorry, taking out Mela, of course, in that mid fight up top is actually going to mean that. Well, I would have thought actually that um, <laughs> that lunch would pr probably have had the advantage, but actually because there's so much DPS there, now they can run back and they won can run back to the close point, and they can probably take out Quiver oh, very, quite fast. Very nice oh. move, uh, leaving and getting Odium there off point That's line. It. They got the mid cap back and can now uh, really have the have the player advantage in this four v four. So we have a 3v3 <laughs> possibly going in a, a or a 2, 2v3 at the moment. Quelv uh, and Milo Kreiter. Milo Kreiter on the point, of course, can sustain quite a bit. Uh, we have Shad having some trouble. He, he's really trying, li like a kid that can't quite reach a shelf. He's trying to shoot, <laughs> a, <laughs> shoot at Quelv. Well, I was just looking at um, Quiver as well. He, he's, he had 25 stacks of might, which is why, and then he jumped onto the point when he had four boons as well. But it got bursted down pretty damn quick, and all his all his boons were kind of almost removed as well. So he's currently down on point. Milo Kreiter as well is not going to be long until he's down as well. And he hasn't really got many cooldowns left, just the stone your ground, of course, and he can pop that Virtue of Courage, uh, sorry, Virtue of Resolve, which he has just done, just to get a little bit more healing for himself. But he's kind oh, of yeah, screwed and, here. And we have a really risky, risky situation uh, to make up for the long 2v3. They tried and pull a couple of more players, especially Taxby, into the fight on the hench. Uh, Rom immediately saw that. We have the respawn of Quoth, who is going for the midpoint actually. So Rom got the D cap, tried to get the cap, but the respawn of Quov means he has to go to mid. The question is, is Quov going to get the D cap or is Rom going to be fast enough? Don't know, but I think there's oh, some and the immobilize. We have the immobilize, and that pretty much means the D cap is secured. So no points taking at the moment. If we take a look at the scoreboard, we are at 205 to 185. So it's really close, and Rom and Quov are in a Bit of a chase match, nice with the teleport tricked Rom. Quoth, of course, has the superior mobility and is just trying to get a little bit more just of the caps with kiting him around. Just having a look at Tommy Tom now as, as he's on the point. I and mean, takes him, he's quite low as well, so he needs to watch out. He hasn't got any conditions on him, so he's okay for the moment. He's just going to kind of range in some grenades as well, just put some AoE down on the point. And he's actually just running off now. Looks like he's going to go back to mid to see if he can possibly decap it, because I think Ron might abandon. Not too sure. He's just standing at the bottom of the stairs, so if he if anyone does come up, which is Taxby, so that 1v1 is going to be engaged fairly soon. I think they might have noticed that Taxby went, uh, went off from the team fight at Henge. Yeah, it's kind of obvious. He yeah, wasn't throwing grenades anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that's good. That's a nice position from Rom as well, because he can just, you know, come onto the point, knock him back if he needs to. But Quiver's come up behind as well, popping up the... Um, Nice little rotation in the fire achievement there. So he's going to do some nice damage, potentially building some might as well for Texby, but not sure he's in range actually of that. Um, and Texby's just going to be able to range some grenades off point. He doesn't need to get into melee range. Quivre's on point as well. So he's quite close, although Rom's gone around to the corner. So he needs to try and get Mailo some line of sight there. Already rotating. Uh, nice. Rom as a warrior can sustain for quite, a, uh, for quite a while against two people. But having Milo there, of course, uh, is a big advantage. Quelf and Milo, do they... I'm I'm surprised to see uh, they use Milo in in such a really one v one bunker kind of way, not uh, not really having him in the big team fights. If well, maybe they they want to rotate the entire team fight soon, and this is just a preemptive measure they're taking. Yeah, I don't know. Normally, I mean, yeah, they, everyone's bailing off the point now, so it looks like everyone's kind of gathering around mid, below, and above as well, so I think maybe a little regroup's coming out from lunch. Not too sure. Like, Quivre went back to the close. Texabi and Quivre coming together now as well. Rom looks like he's heading back up to keep, to try and keep that defended. Although Milo's quite, Milo, sorry, Mr. Melo is currently on point there. We do have a 1v1 over on the Henge point as well, just to note that we haven't seen any boss kills currently in this game. We are in the first round, guys, of the ESL Weekly Cup uh, just over on my channel just a quick change this week um, so welcome very much welcome very much that's a good sentence <laughs> welcome to the channel if you have just tuned in and uh, you do see in the first game only 300 points at the moment to 55 HP Monks versus 250 for uh, I Love Lunch
Yeah, Milo Kreiter and Mr. Malo, the, the, the Malo Milo team, uh, are now going as the Guardians into the team fight. Uh, we're gonna have soon a 1v1 Rom against, although Quoth doesn't look like he really wants to take that 1v1. Or wants to get a really good opener into that. Mm, he's gonna, I mean, he's gonna jump into the fight with Rom now on that point, and that could, that's gonna last a long time. And to be honest, you'd favor him really on Rom because Quoth is gonna have to jump. Pardon me, off point every so often just to get out of the anyway. AOE Cleveland. Oh, we do see Shad's just jumping on point as well. Taking down Tex would be really fast there. Yeah, the pause is on there and down. staying on there, and that pretty much secures the storm. We had a little bit of damage going on from Shad there uh, to make it even more secure. And now, immediately, the move to go even if he's, he's pretty much screwed if he runs into Quove. And now, notice that, that he was kind of almost. Uh, running right into his walkway when you try to get the decap. So she needs to regenerate mm. health before he tries stuff like that. Or maybe stealth through. Yeah, possibly. But, a little but, bit of a mistake. But Quof seems ready. Yeah, so, Quof is always ready. He's always ready. He's just, he's waiting. He looks like he's standing there. Definitely <laughs> watching something. I'm not too sure what, but hey-ho. Um, so, just having a look at the shadow. Something slash. really interesting is going on <laughs> here. We, we, and, and we just don't have a clue. We just didn't get it. I've, I think, uh, yeah, a couple of people saying they got a bit of lag, and actually, yeah, I've got a little bit myself at the moment in this arena, so we're gonna have, okay. we'll see what happens. I don't know. All right, okay, that's good then. That, that's a good thing I'm not streaming. Um, but in Genie Modi, I'm just kind of trying to follow around Shad. He did get a little bit of stealth off there as well, just off the point of uh, Henge at the moment. We do see a little bit of off point for in just two v two currently. We've still no boss attacks happened yet, and the lead has really extended now. Fifty five HP monks. Shaddy's currently stuck though, really low on HP. He's going to go down now to text be putting down those grenades. And Genie coming in trying to offer some cleave damage up yeah, as well yeah. to hit that's Tommy. Not gonna work. Don't think there's going to be a rest coming out for Shad here at the moment. But three really, people going to get the stomp on Shad. That's that's a long time to really completely lose the pressure on, on the hench fight. But we have uh, Tommy Tom Tom just getting focused down while he's trying to get back to the hench point. And now, oh, he, he should not, he should really not die in this position here. He needs to get back to Melo. Caught in an immobilize. The damage is coming. He's trying to dodge like a maniac and uh, should really position himself <laughs> for going down. Although against three yeah. people, it might get difficult. I'm not sure. Yeah, he's he's done a good job. He's lining his sight. Uh, he's lining sight in now off point as well as Texv and uh, Ingenium trying to follow him. Tommy, sorry, um, but he again immobilized as well. He's, re he's really doing such a good job at taking off those conditions, but he still has quite a lot of poison and bird, uh, bleeding and as well at the moment. So he's doing a nice job. To, you know, he does have his teleport if he needs to get out of there as an emergency. But you know they're not going to get this point anytime soon, really. To be honest, versus these two guys, they're so bunkery. They really need to hit the mid. And in my we're, we're going to have now the. Last couple of points going in there for the 500 mark, and that means 55 is going to get the first round. Uh, just to mention it again, this was a 4v4 pretty much the entire time. We had an early disconnect from Bullet Punch, and Misha then AFK'd to make it a bit more fair. Uh, we're going to see if he can somehow get back into the game. But the 4v4 goes also a little way to explain why we didn't have any creature kills here. Because it's sometimes difficult to find a person who can spare the time to go for a creature if you have five people. <laughs> yeah. With... And then when you've got four people, yeah. it becomes an almost impossibility to actually do. Especially if like two of your burstiest people are out. Like Misha was out for 55 HP monks and yeah, of course, then Billet's out as well. Because I think, to, you know, there would be a bit of a combination right there. Um, da, 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 da. I think we might have to wait for a couple of minutes now. Um, team with Thief wins. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry. I was just jumping into Nightbot as well so I can um, get some control of uh, the channel and whatnot guys for you thank you very much guys for joining us um we do apologize we've had cut a bit of a late start and also we had a dc so misha on 55 hp monks did drop out so as you saw it was five versus four um and the end of that map there but it was actually a 4v4 so it to say it was fair i don't you know i mean if someone drops out of your team it's you know you got to kind of rejig some stuff and get well get back in there but we could quickly go over the um I might go over the oh god the map and just tell people what the uh, what we do on this map. Yeah, do it. What people will do, what people could do, 
and maybe what they won't do. Um, so <laughs> this is what they should do, <laughs> and what they shouldn't do. This is legacy of Fofa, <laughs> and uh, it's a very good thing. Um, we have two bases. We have the uh, we have the blue base in the northeast, and we have the red base in the southwest. We also have in the middle and the uh, top and um, top left and top right hand corners. I'll, I'll go for some different uh, directions. Uh, quarry in the bottom right. We do have graveyard in the middle, and we have waterfall in the top left. We also have two bosses, two lords, sorry, which is surrounded by four mobs. Each lord is worth 150 points. The uh, extra mobs are worth nothing, but of course you can rally off them like you do in PvE as well. So if you go in for a lord rush and uh, you go down, then killing one of the mobs is also quite a nice idea, trying to get some AoE down uh, so you can bring people back into well, the fight. Uh, get, uh, didn't ooh, that get ooh, fixed? Did it? I think it did. I, I don't I, know. It might have, actually. I, Just as I was saying it, I wasn't 100% sure. But I thought I got rallied the other day. But maybe that was War Banner. I, I thought I did get rallied <laughs> the other day. So I, I mm. know there was, uh, there, there was, there was something talk about mentioned there. Yeah, but, but I don't know if they actually put it into effect. Okay. Well, I'll have to double check that at some point. I'm I, sure it's... I really there's... rarely lost Rush on this map. It's, it's always such a risk. What? <laughs> I swear we did three Lord Rushes last week. Really? But anyway. It's... Well, uh, but, okay, but, but we lost due to those. Well, that, that's true. That wasn't my call either. But back to ESL we can go. <laughs> so if you get 150 points uh, for the Lord kill, you don't, and you're at 350, you will win the game. So sometimes if you're low on points and the other team is going to win, um, then we can, of course, that team can go for an optional, optional Lord kill, which, of course, will mean that you potentially lose caps on the actual map itself, and you could lose the game anyway. But sometimes it's worth the risk, and sometimes we see double Lord pushes as well. And, you know, it could be interesting to see. We'll have to see. And it's also the the 350-point mark you mentioned, which is kind of the the mark where a lord kill secures an instant win is is also a little bit of a psychological play because there's really pressure on the team that hasn't reached the 350 mark yet because uh they not only need to have an eye on their lord they uh, also are under a lot of pressure of getting past that mark to maybe do a counter lord rush because in some cases it, we have seen lord rushes uh, lord rushes failing but it can be pretty hard especially if you have a fiery greatsword or something the the lord goes down unbelievably quick and in this yeah case, exactly uh, if i remember correctly we actually have one yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, as as well, it's nice to, yeah, if you just stealth and you just get onto the actual Lord himself and just plant all your damage down, the mob's reaction is so slow and you can just burst that boss down, like, uh, you know, really quick. Also, you know, the Mesmer Thief combo is really good and the LE Thief combo is really good. Even with Warrior there, I mean, just it's just making sure that you're actually going to interrupt the heal, which is a really, really important thing. We actually didn't see that happen last weekend yeah. on Tournament of Legends as well. And still the bosses, the Lords went down because of this, you know... The amount of damage that was coming out from the actual teams that um, we did see in those two yeah, tournaments. So I, it's going to be. I remember quite a lot of Lord rushes where really the the problem point was the interrupt of the heal, and yeah, I I don't know why that's not that hard. You you have classes that can interrupt <laughs> uh, every couple of seconds. We 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 have the steel interrupt with the six points in uh, in trickery on the thief. We have interrupts on the mesma. We we have interrupts everywhere, but still, it the heal comes through that often. It's it's a bit surprising to me, but maybe it's it's also um, with the combination of just having a team fight while doing a lot. Yeah. Well, that's that's it exactly. You know, time goes quite slow, and especially if you're very engaged, you got to focus on. I mean, that's the guardian or whoever's there, is, or whoever that can heal the lord when they're there. Even if it's just like an NG, he's got to make sure that he's got someone to blast his heals, or so they can actually give the um, lord some extra health and anyone else. So they can kind of, you know, they've almost got in a different situation where they're just focusing on keeping someone up. Um, rather than just trying to kill the opposite team. So, you know, it's kind of, it's tough when you go back to defend because you've got a lot of things to think about more than the opposite team, of course, because obviously they just want to kill the bloody Lord. Um, to, to very quickly respond to a question in chat, no, I do not smoke grass. I just have a generally dopey expression. That's normal. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I didn't know you put the cams on there either, so I was probably, you know. Yeah, I don't announce it every my head. time like you do. I, 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 I <laughs> See, I do it because I'm like, I yeah, switch no, we're around. Back to cams, so I don't put your nose or anything. <laughs> the transition needs to be fluid. It's so, it's so lovely. I, well, um, I never say lovely. But, since yeah. we have the time, I want to go over one quick thing that is special to that map. Uh, as you've seen on the map itself, uh, we have the three capture points. Up, uh, they're pretty much in a row and very close together which doesn't only mean that it's fairly easy to hold two points that are close together. Uh, also, just the large point in the middle of the graveyard means it's fairly hard to capture, but once you've got it, uh, it's really hard to lose it. You, you just have a, a really big area uh, you can play with, and of course, very often, when we have the two cap from a team, we're gonna see them positioning themselves here on the side where you really have an overview uh, almost of all three points. You can almost see uh, right through to the waterfall if you've got quarry and graveyard, but you can definitely keep an eye on whether people are going to go either to uh, to decap your back point and you can be quick enough, especially with an elementalist, which we've seen in play most of the time, uh, or you can just hop on down and get the, uh, get the graveyard secure, which is also a bit of a risky move. Uh, I often see people then going from the ledge to get a little bit of last minute burst on the target to really get him down. And that's mostly <clears> the situation where the thief thinks, okay, I'm just gonna st uh, shadow step up there and get the decap. Yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. It's a nice, that's what's nice about this map as well. And there's a good, there's really good points for the, um, for Necro to put Flesh Worm up on, on different sides as well as you come in. Like really high points as well, where it's really tough for the opposite team to actually get in actually gonna be able to pull them down unless they've got yeah. like an ng with and or someone that can knock down knock back sorry or pull down it's actually a really really annoying point you can blink and you know, like you said there's so many ways to get out um, yeah, out of this point we even have uh, both elementalists on dagger dagger if we have a quick look at it oh no well yeah. Qu Quof is on staff now but uh, he's probably going to switch to dagger dagger later uh, just for the buffing at the beginning um, so, especially the staff alleys are particularly useful here because they, they have just such a huge range that they can almost uh, almost get their full damage output and full support from the side. And mm -hmm. uh, still, so you have five participants in the mid fight and still a pretty solid back point bunker because they can be as quick as thieves. As quick as thieves. As thick as, as thieves, as <laughs> thick as quick as a thick thief, but also, <laughs> but... You, which is a good point, <laughs> which is a good point about you, which you, what, what you said about elementalists with staff, if they do use staff, of course, um, is that they can the damage can actually spread on, on nearly the whole point of mid actually if they trade into yeah. it as well. So that's actually quite that good, like good. meteor storm, yeah, meteor storm and the heal as well. Um, which which is generated, of course, by staff. So it's you know mid fight is kind of good for an Ellie. It can cover like a lot of the point with some damage and some healing as well. So that's yeah. quite nice. But not not a lot of people play staff on this map, to be honest. But we'll see. We do have five on five now, everyone. In the ESL really? Weekly Cup number forty. <laughs> by the way, uh, when you were talking about uh, as quick as a thief, or we were, uh, yeah. I. I really want a t-shirt where it says, I cannot run a centaur. I, I want that. I want that on a t-shirt. Oh. You cannot run a centaur. Who says that? Uh, no one says that. Every character, every time you get a speed buff. Oh, um, I cannot <laughs> run a centaur. I cannot yeah. run a centaur. At least my well, says this all the time, and I've heard humans say it, and I think even Savari. Not sure about that. But my, my I don't think Norns say. I think my sewer is Norns special. Don't say it. Norns don't say it because they're cooler than that. Norns <laughs> are the coolest race. Norns are the master race, but not in PvP. I'm too cool to be the centaur. <laughs> there is that. We do have 30 seconds, guys, apparently, until the game is going to start. Okay, that's the specific. mass. So, yeah, 30 seconds. Exactly. Yeah, Shant's on it, you know. You know what he's like. He's. <laughs> He's very precise. He's a very precise young man. He knows what to do, he knows where to go, and he knows what to do in time. What are they doing over here? I think they're having a dance. One no, they're not. They're just standing there. He, he's as on time as a German train, but that's no longer true. Oh, that's not fun. 
for the trains or for Shad. So are you comparing Shad to a train? Yeah, let's let, oh. let's, let's say that. <laughs> well, maybe someone needs to tell Chad that. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet nonsense. laugh, out, mate. <laughs> nonsense. <laughs> we have it. gone over the map. I actually, it might be nice to just remind people also that when you enter the ESL Weekly Cup, the match will start soon, and it's going to start right now. Fine. 800 gems for second Fini place for each player yeah. and 2,000 gems for each player. Wanted to say, if finish your thought there. Uh, so, we <laughs> finally are in the second match. It's going to be on Legend, uh, Legacy of the Foe Fire. We have Lunchbox still on the red side and 55 on the blue side. Who can bring the win home in this best of three? They can indeed. And at the moment, we do classic split. Normally, uh, it would have been, you know, Naya's range of its Tommy this time as the Elementalist doing a classic. Not really That's classic split, defensive. actually, at all. Shad and Mes uh, Shad and uh, Misha, sorry, being. Did they stealth there? I did just miss that, actually, as I came into the map. I don't believe so. But they're going to yeah, jump they, on they, Texabee they, they quickly. Oh, Texabee needing to use that Elixir S to just get out of there. And that was actually a really good move because he needs to... Of course, there is going to be no direct damage coming to him. There's still conditions affected, but there was none on oh, him at the, the time. The going through as well. Bullet has yeah, no. point as well. We, we have we have Kryta going into the direction of the point, but no longer being able to actually contest it. Uh, Misha now got out of the fight really closely, uh, got a little bit of, I think, bleeding left there, and uh, went down. Now Milo Kryta here to, uh, to stomp him. Nobody in the general area to get the res off. And we still have the people fighting a bit over Waterfall, and especially in between Waterfall. On the midpoint itself, we just have Melo and Ingenium uh, just Quaver leaving and trying to get something going on the Waterfall. Maybe. Yeah, I'm quite surprised that out of the two people that left that fight, it, was, it, was, it wasn't Melo and it was actually Evie But hey-ho. That's fine. I think it would have been better for Melo to actually wander over to the Warfall, because now it's three versus one, as Rom's currently on his own. Tommy's coming back, though. Milo is going back to mid to try and get that mid-fight started off, and Misha looks like he's popping into mid as well. We do have Quiver just looking over the quarry, and I think he's going to come into the midpoint as well to get on, get in on some action over here. Mr. Melo's got a bit of damage on him, but he's got all his cooldowns left. Doesn't yeah, need to worry too much. We, we can see they had the, uh, the hesitation. Quiver went down like for a second to get a bit of damage out, uh, damage out, but immediately went back to his position where he can actually defend the back point or be fast enough to, to defend it. Now there, there's an aggress uh, aggressive situation again. We've got Bullet down, he, w he wants to get the rest off, actually got it off even in the midst of the cleave. And back on the point it is because Shad is trying to get the decap. Yeah, Shad, Shad's a cheeky little man, but you know, that's a good spot from Quiv. That's a good spot indeed. And the SL comes up, so they're going to want to put a lot of AoE down on that SL, and of course Shad's going to just get Shad himself on the edge. Now. I, I would have thought he would actually try and get the decap again, because he... Yeah, had, yeah. Oh, oh he, he actually he actually juked Quiv there. He, uh, he thought the same thing as I did, and went back <laughs> to the point. It's quite good, actually, but Texy, yeah. Texaby, again, always the main target for that team. Look at the blue team's HP. Whoa. As they went for that down, everyone got cleaved to hell. But the survival of like, Melo was just on well. it with the healing. And it, yeah, and Misha actually just got cleaved down as well. I'm not even sure that was all focus damage. I just did miss that, actually. But he's back into the fight. We have Shotgun mm, with that was very nice. little AP for the decap. <laughs> Quov is on him, but he's a little bit too slow. Does he have... No, he doesn't have the Venom. He tries to slow him a little bit. Oh. Does, doesn't quite get the decap and might actually pay with his life here. No, got, got away quickly. At least, I and suppose, Quiver has to stay there a little bit longer to actually keep, you know... Get the cap, get the full cap back, so it doesn't get back to that point, of course, because you, you know decap points as well, kind of useful in that situation that you can just jump back up and there and uh, go get that decap quite well, easily. That, There's a lot of downs was, happening on this midpoint. Yeah, that was actually a pretty risky va uh, vapor form from Tommy Tom Tom, uh, a little bit early actually, uh, because he Ooh, almost he got he, he almost <laughs> got the last second stomp in there. He did get the rally from uh, from the Texas be death though, of course. There no res coming out, so it was nice, nice move. I think he was just trying to move a little bit closer to Texas B's body so that they could, you know. Whoa, Milo Kreta got mowed there on point. Milo gonna get that safe storm and stability, and uh, it looks doesn't look good for lunch at the moment on this mid cap at the moment. Might need to think about potentially oh, going for now far. on the aggressive, trying to get the DK on That's far, it. but we immediately have Misha Thinhead having an eye on him, and uh, even Tom Tommy Tom and Shut. 
They just want to take him out immediately, immobilize right before the point, and they get him down before he even gets on there. Tanks be ready to get the res off, but the damage from those three is just too much to handle. Well, yeah, it's kind of an obvious move as well. I mean, it probably needed to happen a lot earlier than it actually did. And Texaby is about to go down as well, because I think he was on his way, but it just came around the side and Misha was able and to take him out. Him so, Which is yep. a pretty strong move. Is he, is he just trying to die? He's yeah. blinded and down, everybody. <laughs> blinded and down. That's so just have nasty. A look at sh <laughs> That's just mean. These people are mean. Look at 55 HP marks going mean. They stick someone in from Team Mist and look what happens. <laughs> I'm joking. Okay, Much what... respect to Rom, actually. It's quite nice to see Rom playing with uh, 55 HP monks. It's nice. It's good stuff. Yeah, we have Ingenium, um... Odium, and uh, Mitocratic kind of looking for an opening. Uh, maybe regathering. They have now got the attention from Shad, uh, Rom, and Tom, Tommy Tom. Well, actually, we have Mitocratic. Where did he go? <laughs> he kind of they're really of the... pushing Ingenium back into the base. Jesus, they're not even yeah, but... letting them get out. But he, he distracted them uh, so far as to enable Mitocrator to get the decap. We still have the portal, and it's activated, so he might go through there really quickly, I yeah. Don't know if it's long but enough, because Misha's on the point. With one cap left to decap, one point to decap, sorry. Uh, they actually oh, didn't get the decap might actually go well. for the Lord already. We might see a solo Lord Rush try from uh, from Rom here. We don't Blimey, see... Blimey, O'Reilly. Yeah, Rom can do that as well. Rom yeah. can do that. They pushed Ingenium so far that he actually died right next to the gate, brought the gate down, shut finished off Ingenium, and we have Rom at the boss, and up until now there is no reaction from the red team whatsoever. I mean, this is... It just... It really depends on how... What they... If, do they think that Rom's going to be able to do it? Because Rom's really low on HP, and he might actually have to run out of this fight. I haven't yeah. checked his cooldowns either. He's got no cooldowns. He's going to be screwed. I mean, you know... He doesn't need to remove any conditions because that's just not going to happen. But Lord's going to start resetting. Look, at he's actually doing a really, really nice job um, because he was going to start walking back. But no, full reset there for the Lord. He has taken some mobs down. So if they do want to take that um, chance to go for the Lord again, they can do that. But of course, you know, um, the map is still 55 HP monks at yeah. the moment. And even with Brom uh, not being on the map anymore and trying his luck with a Lord rush or, well, <laughs> Again, n nothing really rushy about that. Uh, 55 managed to, with four players, get a um, get an outer point. Double cap. He's going uh, again. He's going really? again. Yes. He's doing it again. <laughs> oh, God. Well, at least so he, if, he, he now got rid of all the... Uh, except he's got for one, one more. Caster. Yeah, if he can get rid of that caster. I mean, this, this is going to be Rom versus flipping Lord at the moment. <laughs> this is gonna work. It's a good thing he's got a copy of this, because at the moment, the Lord is actually only on about 30-40% HP, and the knockback came in, the interrupt on the heel. He's easily going to be able to 1v1 the Lord. Easily. And now the people get kind of scared. We have Shad now reacting to Ingenium Odium being scared to he's got the um, Lord. Ma ma maybe have to try and kill the Lord. <laughs> and now they're really... Really uh, close to winning Why? this. 70 points, Why? they still have the waterfall, and nobody did anything against Rom on the Lord. I don't know what to say, really. And they actually got the... <laughs> I really don't know what to say about that. I mean, but the, the thing is, 55 HP monks are playing so strong that they've kept the caps in favor of them on the map, and they've sent someone to kill the Lord solo. Really? Really, 55 HP monks? Well, we you we had we brothers. had Shad taking care of two people, kind of playing with them, always stealthing, re-stealthing, going for the decap, running away again when the two people got there. So he didn't quite bunker anything, but he kept them busy, and that's yeah. just one element of uh, 55 really holding on to this while they had the time for Brom to just have some fun with the Lord. So uh, yeah, good job in a very very random game. A very, very random faux fire. <laughs> I don't know what to say to that solo Lord kill. Especially from a warrior. Like, it was, it's pretty bloody obvious that that was going to happen. Um, but yeah. yeah. I mean, in, in, in Genium, it, it's not that it's a secret. Maybe they just thought he can't do it. This or, is Rom we're talking about or, as well. They or, should know that he can do that. <laughs> or that he wouldn't try again. Because the first time he, he yeah, did... True. Well, kind of fail. He brought down some some of the embassies at the side of the Lord and made it yeah. easier for him uh, for him in the second try. 
Uh, but in, in Genium saw him walking by, they must have gotten some of the alerts. Uh, your, your lord is getting attacked or whatever it's called. can't remember. But uh, well, we they, they concentrated on the points. Well, and... Yeah, they won. Good job. 55 managed to get it with a funny lord rush. Good fair. <laughs> it was... I mean, come on, we give, give Rom as well. We've got to give him a little hand of applause, round of applause because, you know, that's not... I think, you know, most people would have given up. It's nice how he line of sight around the corner so the casters, the mobs, didn't catch, couldn't actually get him as well. So it was only against the Lord and two mobs. And then, you know, he let the Lord reset a little bit and the rest of the mobs so could apply a little bit more pressure. Had to get back out, reset, then ran back. And, you know, Ingenium Modium was just kind of watching from afar, I think, at that, at that state as he was currently down on the floor. But a 55 HP Monk's taking advantage of the Lord kill and going to semi-final, which is cool.